Hello and welcome to Exam AZ 900, Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 36, Azure Policy. My name is Tim Warner. Our objective today in the AZ 900 objective domain starts with the functional group describe identity, governance, privacy, and compliance features. The objective is describe Azure governance features and our specific skill is called describe the functionality and usage of Azure policy. Go to timw.info forward slash az900sg for the interactive table of contents for this course that includes video hyperlinks. Now, what is Azure policy? If you look at the Azure icons on the right, you see taxonomic tags, Azure monitor, Azure cost management, and a globe that represents regions. What we're talking about here with Azure policy, it's a solution to assess your compliance in Azure at scale. In other words, you've got a single pane of glass to create policies and enforce those policies to govern your business's management of Azure. In other words, maybe your requirements are such that all resources have to have such and so taxonomic tags for cost center management purposes. Or maybe your data sovereignty compliance requirements mean that all deployments have to go only to specific regions. Maybe for cost savings purposes, all deployments have to use only certain VM sizes for virtual machines or certain Azure SQL sizes. Or maybe your monitoring team insists that you have policy that automatically enables diagnostics logging and onboarding to Azure Log Analytics whenever somebody deploys a new deployment. You see, these are all examples that are part of the Azure governance strategy. There's Azure policy, there's taxonomic tags itself, there's role-based access control. All of these are different ways for your business to manage who does what, who's responsible for what, and how do we stay within the bounds of our compliance requirements as well as your budgetary and organizational policy requirements. More about Azure policy. Technically, an Azure policy is simply a text file. It's a file using JavaScript object notation, and it has a particular JSON syntax. The workflow for Azure policy is that you can either do an initiative or individual policy definitions. There's lots and lots of built-in policies to choose from, and you also can author your own if you're not happy with the built-in ones. That follows a similar pattern to what we saw in the previous episode with role-based access control. An initiative is simply a collection of one or more policies that you can assign as just one unit instead of individually assigning a number of separate policies. So you've got your policy definitions and they just are in a draft state until you assign them to a management scope. And at that point, you can audit, which is to determine resource compliance, or you can actually have Azure Policy take action to remediate and bring resources and deployments into compliance. Those policy effects are manifold. In a moment, I'm going to give you a link into the documentation. You don't need to know or memorize all these for the exam, so I'm not going to give you a blow-by-blow -blow description of each one. But the effect determines what Azure does if it realizes and does an evaluation that a deployment or that a resource is out of compliance. Do you want the policy to just make an audit log entry? Do you want Azure policy to prevent or deny a deployment if it fails compliance? Or as I mentioned earlier, there's a couple of these policy effects, namely deploy if not exists and modify, in which you can actually do a remediation task. And this is particularly useful if you already have resources deployed and then you enable policy. The remediation task allows you to go back and retroactively correct compliance failures on existing resources. It's pretty sweet little bit more info on those remediation tasks besides the fact that its purpose is to correct non-compliant resources and deployments. It affects just those two policy effects, like I said. And if you're thinking that what is the security context that Azure policy uses, if you're thinking that, good for you. You're already beyond the skill set of Azure fundamentals. But the remediation task requires what's called a managed service identity or MSI. And Azure will create that in your Azure Active Directory tenant and give permissions to it as appropriate. That is simply an identity that's not associated with a human being. It's associated with Azure itself, and that provides the identity and security context that Azure needs if it's going to perform a modify action on your resources. I talked a bit about management scopes in the previous lesson in this series. 
If you want to look deeply into this, go to timw.info forward slash org. That's where I got the image that you see on the right side of this slide. The issue here is that we've got inheritance taking place for Azure Policy the same way that we do with role-based access control. Did we do locks already? If we haven't covered resource locking yet, we will soon enough. Those also inherit. Long story short, if you apply a policy at, say, the subscription scope, that permission is going to apply to all resource groups and resources in that subscription, not necessarily other subscriptions. If you apply the policy at the management group, then yes, that policy will cascade by inheritance through subscriptions, resource groups, and resources. Now, taxonomic tags on their own do not inherit. That's a notable difference in behavior with the other Azure governance products, namely role-based access control and policy. In this demonstration, we're going to work with Azure Policy, at least top-line view. You remember that Azure Fundamentals is not intended, strictly speaking, for technical people, but also non-technical. So I always need to remind myself to calibrate the depth. Okay, here's what we've got going on. I've got a resource group called Tim. And as we can see here, there's a number of resources in the Tim resource group. I can scroll down. It doesn't matter what they are in particular. But if we go to the tags blade for the resource group, we can see that there's currently no tags. Let's add one now. I'm going to add one. Tags, by the way, I think we covered this. It's hard. These lessons tend to blend together. Tags are simply name value pairs, and your team decide what your tags are going to be. And they're used to logically categorize resources. I'm going to use the name class and the value AZ900 in this case. And if I apply that tag to the resource group, it'll show up on the overview page. As you can see, it'll show up on the tags page. However, as I said, these tags do not inherit. So if we go to a child resource like this automation account, Notice that there's no tag. So we've got a compliance issue. We've got a governance issue. And then what if I deploy something else into this Tim resource group? How can we ensure that that tag gets applied to those new resources? Because you know as well as I do, human error, human nature is such that people are going to forget or maybe they'll remember to do a tag. But what if they Instead of using the pick list where Azure saves previously used name and value pairs, what if someone does a mistype like this? That's going to mess up your cost center reporting because that's not going to get picked up if we do a search just for class with two S's. You see what I mean? So all this leads us to Azure Policy. Let's head on over to the Policy Blade. And if we go under Authoring Definitions, we can take a look, first of all, at what scope we want to look at. I'm going to change the scope selector. Actually, I don't need to because it's at my correct subscription. So let's leave that alone. For definitions, an initiative is simply a container that encloses one or more policies. We'll just look at policies. You can do custom, but we're just going to filter to look built in. And for category, why don't I look with us just at the category for tags and see if there's anything that jumps out as a good candidate for our use. We've got a few that could be interesting here. How about inherit a tag from the resource group? Let's try that one. We click its definition and then collapse the top pane. Let's take a quick look at the JSON here. Again, don't worry about this to a great degree of depth. On AZ900, you're going to need to know the basics of what a policy is and when you'd use it, but you're not going to be seeing JSON on your exams. That's not what the purpose of the Azure Fundamentals is. is. If you do decide to go to the associate or expert level, then and it's going to be all JSON all the time. Now, it looks like that this particular one is looking for just a tag name. Well, that's not good enough, actually. So let me step out of here and let's take another closer look. Append a tag and its value from the resource group. Let's see if that'll work because we want class and we want AC900 says in the description field, appends the specified tag with its value from the resource group when any resource is missing. Okay, that I think is what we need. And the parameter here is just going to accept a tag name. Well, let's just see if this works. The way that the policy evaluation works, it's almost always an if clause. And what this is saying, if the field tag name that you've specified for the parameter is false, then add it in. It does an append operation. Well, let's go ahead and assign this and see what happens. When you assign a policy, you assign it at one of those management scopes. And here I'm going to choose my subscription, but I'm going to scope it down to the Tim resource group. Let's select here. We can change its name, give it a description, etc., etc. I'll go next. And next we have our parameters. 
And here, the description is just asking for a tag name, so I'm a little bit concerned. It says append a tag and its value from the resource group. So this is a similar theme I think you've seen from the previous lesson where I did an RBAC assignment, and then it turned out that that didn't give the user exactly the permissions that I needed. And you know, as an instructor, you're always left with, should I delete that and re-record it so it's perfect? But I tend to like to add that into my training because I don't want my training to be fake. I want it to be real world. So this refactoring process is part of what it is to be an Azure administrator. So let's fill that in. We did class, so we'll review and create, and we're creating this assignment. Good. And we can step out of this definition screen, bring back our settings, and if we go to assignments, we can now see that we've got one assignment, append a tag and its value, and we can follow its behavior over here under overview. We can see it looks like the compliance state hasn't kicked in yet, but you can see in this view, and these are this is an interactive view, you can see compliant versus non-compliant resources. And then there's a whole section for remediation tasks, depending upon what the policy needs to do. That's beyond our scope to get into. I think we can go ahead and test this right now. Why don't we do a new deployment? Let's say we're going to create a storage account. I'm going to accept all the defaults here just to get to the good stuff. I'll make sure to add this to Tim. I'll give it a name, AZ900 Storage. It has to be a globally unique name. I'll leave everything here at the default. And when I get to the tags page, I'm notably not going to add a tag here. Let's say I forgot, quote unquote. And we're going to see if Azure Policy picks that up for us and fixes the issue. So it looks like if all goes well here and Azure does in fact put that class AZ900 name value pair on this new storage account, then that is an exception to what I had mentioned about the need for a managed service identity when Azure needs a context to do it. It looks like Azure doesn't need any additional permissions to get that done. Let's go to storage accounts. Let's jump on over to our new storage account. And aha, you can see it right down there on tags. It looks like that worked just fine. Excellent. Now, real world. I'm just going to leave you with this for homework. If we go back to resource groups and we go back to Tim, Tim has that tag. That's great. Our new storage account has that tag. That's awesome. But what about all of the other resources that don't yet have that tag? We have a couple choices. We're going to need to go back to policy and we're either going to need to start over that is to say we can unassign this policy and start over or we can modify the policy if we know what json we need to change or we can look for another built-in policy that is more close to what we need i'm in this case going to open the context menu and delete this assignment here at this point once this change goes into effect azure will no longer evaluate any resources in that resource group against the policy assignment and we can come back and continue our work. For this reason, it's important that when you're doing role-based access control and policy, that you work on test dev resources first and get it right, and then and only then do your assignments in your production environment. That's enough for now. I hope you liked that demo. For learning resources first, for the basics of Azure policy, go to the Azure Docs. My short link is timw.info forward slash AP01. If you want more detail on Azure policy effects, that's timw.info forward slash AP02. And for further elucidation and enlightenment for remediation tasks, go to timw.info forward slash AP03. Awesome. Another lesson down. Congratulations. Our next episode, ah, here it is, the answer to my earlier question. We'll cover resource locks next. In the meantime, you can follow me on Twitter at Tech Trainer Tim, view my plural site content at timw.info forward slash ps, or visit my website at techtrainertim.com. Thanks a lot. See you around.